first and foremost, the bylaws in a particular body corporate scheme would overrule a tenant's right. So if a tenant has a right under that Residential Tenancies and Rooming Accommodation Act, if that's inconsistent with a body corporate bylaw, the body corporate bylaw takes precedent. So whilst body corporate blanket bans on pets are not common, most bodies corporate have some type of restriction or regulation on the type of pet, the number of pet, how the pet can operate within the body corporate. Um, and there's often lots of hoops to jump through in order to get a pet in a body corporate property. So there's generally a requirement to obtain committee approval for each pet. Um, there's often a requirement to register that pet or make that pet known to the on-site manager or caretaker if there is one at the property. And then the sort of obvious restrictions on the number of pets, the type of pet, and then some conditions about what the pet can do and when it's living on the site. If any aspect of the landlord's approval of a pet or and the body corporate bylaws are inconsistent, the body corporate bylaws win. So that's that's taken up in that um, in the grounds for refusal where a landlord can't give an approval that's inconsistent with the body corporate bylaw.